close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. Welcome back, everyone, to Llamascapes. It is day 41, and while I have been editing the previous video, we have been doing some fishing, and we finally maxed out our Ports District reputation. Rank 10 with the Ports. We've moved on to working on Imperial, and we are really closing in on that Rank 10 overall for the city, the 330,000 you need for the Magic Carpet Skilling Buff. Very nice progress here. Uh, and one thing I've noticed is, I don't know if this was here the last time I played, uh, but there is a right-click deposit all fish button. And that is just, that is just beautiful, okay? It is the best button I've ever seen. All right, boys, it is that time again. Level 10 fishing rod o -matic. Oh, yeah. I just, I feel it. I feel it happening. I feel it coming. Boom. There's level 43 invention. 40 in all skills. Nice little broadcast. Only, what, one or two more till I get the 50 in all skills, and then I'll be uh, finally proper base 50s. Oh, and bypassing level 40. Hey, look at that. One more daily to the list of dailies I gotta do, because I now get access to the uh, cave goblin and dwarven stuff. Uh, the, the little contracts or whatever it is that you do every day. Oh, I don't know how I missed it, but exactly level 43, too, is Spring Cleaner and Tight Springs. That is nice. Yeah, I actually didn't really care for the Spring Cleaner previously, uh, but I, I maybe something changed, maybe I missed it, but the, the research mode is actually really useful for it. Uh, so that's something I will hopefully be going for. Oh, and it is finally time to get the last Sleeping Quarters upgrade. That is T3 Town Hall storehouse sleeping quarters and now we got 60 workers so we can just burn through all the rest of these that is really nice uh now anachronia is really gonna be good i mean the tier 3 slayer lodge the hunter lodge it's it's all so nice um yeah i just I i'm happy this has been a 41 day wait, basically. So if you're wondering how long it takes, if you really try to optimize it, it takes about 41, about 41 real days. Yeah, that's, that's all. Okay, because of this flood of messages I am getting right now, yeah, I, I realized something that I did whenever I started this account is I didn't have my online mode as on. I had it as friends only. The entire time. It's not that I, I don't like interacting with people. I actually love interacting with people. So if you want to reach out to me, send me a message in game. Just just add me. Shoot me a message. I'm on most of the time anyway. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was worth throwing in there because <laughs> I, I literally only noticed today when I set myself as offline so I could do some fishing and, and watch a movie with some uh, some family, some friends. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm now actually online as I should be. <laughs> And there we have hit our goal of 82 fishing, but that's not exactly why I'm making the clip right now. It's also that I finished my last fishing rod matic that I had banked. Another 459k, ba bam, 47 invention? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. Here we are at Shattered Worlds, farming out bladed dive that's right so just did worlds 1 to 45 in my first trip and um that uh, it's a nice little chunk of anima i guess good little progress uh towards that goal it turns out bladed dive is quite important for big game hunter um literally every guide suggests that you get it uh and having watched people actually perform the hunting now uh, i understand why uh, so that's something I'm going to be working towards. Uh, it's also use for, useful for uh, skilling and, and whatnot. Uh, just, just playing the game, you know, being able to zoom zoom everywhere. And to start off day 42, we're making even more progress towards our fishing goal, which is totally nebulous. I don't know exactly what my fishing goal is aside from, hey, I want some sailfish for big game hunter. 
Um, I've tried a few different things, uh, a few different boosting methods to see if they worked, how they worked with uh, swarm fishing, uh, you know, things such as the Admiral Pie. I gave the banner boost a shot. I made Ibis pouches. And I only end up getting four sailfish in at least an hour of fishing there. So, yeah, I'm just going to grind out my fishing levels, at least get to like 85, 86-ish, uh, and then give it another real shot. I'll, I'll probably give it another real shot at 85 and see how I can do uh, in about a half hour. Um, yeah, I only need to get about, you know, maybe like 20, 30 sailfish in total to really get rolling on BGH, hopefully get at least one Matic with that. Um, but I don't really want to get it started until I get that, uh, you know, those sailfish banked. So uh, this is basically what I have from from that uh, little bit of a of a test. And I think the main thing that'll change after I get over level 85 is I should stop seeing as many uh, great white sharks and manta rays. And I should start seeing more of this higher tier stuff. Or sorry, I should stop seeing as many raw sea turtles. These are actually a low level drop. Yeah, they belong like right here, and I should start seeing more of the higher level stuff. Even more progress in our fishing journey. Another Omatic down. Disassemble, level 50. So 50 in all skills, finally acquired, and I think those are some nice unlocks too. Yeah, charge drain reduction, junk chance reduction, both very nice. Mechanized chins as soon as I, uh, as soon as I get one more task for the tree, uh, for the weird currency stuff. Some, some very cool unlocks here. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Mechanized Chinchampas. I actually did have a task sitting there from Daily Reset. Totally forgot. Nice. And, uh... Thanks for watching, dude. Oh, and I figure it's finally time to do this. But shout out to the good friend of mine. Y'all can call him Frog Dad if you'd like. But... Uh, he helped me out with some ED1 token farming the other day. I got a nice chunk uh, sorted out. So there is the scroll of cleansing purchased. Uh, also the scroll of efficiency for smithing. Uh, and I want to say there's one more. Yes, the scroll of dexterity for crafting. All sorted out. Um, these are just, you know, really useful unlocks. Uh, and then I'm considering getting an offhand uh, chaotic crossbow as my next thing. Potentially the herbicide. Uh, there are a bunch of different things I could go for. Uh, but for the time being, just going to hold on to these. As I am closing in on the end of this fishing grind, you know, 74 to 85. I just wanted to hit y'all with a little bit of math that I did. And getting the Earn Enhancer has earned me about 81,000 extra fishing XP. Yeah, I mean, y'all really just need to do Nomad's Elegy if you haven't yet, okay? And there we finally have it. 85 fishing picked up. Time to go try out Swarm again and see if it's any better this time around. All right, Swarm Fishing is still slow as ever, but three on the first inventory is a very good sign. That's going to be fine. I'm going to farm up enough today and tomorrow on day 43, and we're going to get rolling up EGH. And I have to say, I always thought the Ibis pet was, uh, or Ibis uh, summoning familiar was pretty, I don't know, useless. But it does seem to, to help my fishing rate a fair bit. And just the fact that it produces raw swordfish at the cost of one green charm, one harpoon, and like, I don't know, 50 uh, spirit shards or whatever. It's it's pretty valuable, right? Getting like 20 raw swordfish out of it. You know, I used to put um, my miscellanea on fish sometimes so that I could get my uh, cooking level up. Basically get, you know, more stuff to cook. It, this is a, a pretty decent addition, to be honest. Just ending up getting, like, 20 raw swordfish uh, every, like, half hour or so while you're fishing and you fish faster to begin with. It's definitely, uh, definitely worth doing. It's something I'll, I'll probably keep doing uh, moving forward. On to day 43, and I was told, or at least I read, that this is very rare. <laughs> like, very rare. Um, okay. I mean, I think it's just like a, a small achievement related thing, but that's an interesting find. Yeah, so when you get this, you just come over here to, uh, yeah, near the, like, where you enter the deep sea fishing hub. And you bang on the ladder, and I think that's, you just, like, toss it up to him, interested in this ring. 
And yeah, there you go. My precious. Uh, great Lord of the Rings reference. Really odd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, according to the wiki, it just says rarity is very rare for every type of fishing spot here. Um, I'm curious if that's like one in a thousand or one in, you know, 10,000 kind of thing. <laughs> Had a few quests I wanted to knock out. So there's completion of You Are It. This one is solely for the quest point and also the casket. Let's pop this open. All right. Well, I guess that's a pretty decent reward given that I got a fortunate component out of it. And while I can't show it again right now, uh, the next time I have an opportunity to, I'm going to show you the Alt-1 Toolkit uh, Puzzle Solver, because they improved it, and that was awesome to use. And this is a quest I've been wanting to finish for a while. Love Story, 50k Construction and Magic, 40k Smithing and Crafting. All of these, very nice. Uh, and also, I believe I get 10,000 in any skill over 60 uh, as soon as I return this ring here. Uh, so that'll be nice. But that is 81 crafting acquired for decorated cooking urns. I need to do a little bit of cooking to keep working on my Shattered Worlds grind. Uh, and the only way I can, yeah, the only way I really want to cook is if I have the urns. And the 10k to any skill of my choice over 60, it's got to go into Herblore. I'm very tempted to save this and put this into summoning later, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and drop it in Herblore now. Got something interesting taken care of or accomplished here. So I got a chocolate cow, a vanilla calf, and a strawberry cow over here. So I have all three kinds. That's needed for an archaeology mystery later. It's also needed for a post-quest reward for the second lumbered chef quest uh the cheesecake quest making one of each is a uh is a reward uh, or, or gives a cooking xp reward uh, something else i'm gonna do is buy one and two farm totems with my beans and throw it on the cow pens for an interesting cooking method that i'm going to uh to try out for a little bit but uh there is one thing i want to take care of first uh, and i know i said i was doing some questing i'm, I'm really just doing all kinds of things today, uh, so <laughs> it's going to be an interesting day. So like I said, I'd be doing varied content, and that varied content means I have the full uh, sous chef outfit now, including the add-on. The add-on is very nice, especially given how much cooking I have to do, uh, all of the food that I've gathered recently. Yeah, it essentially gives you free food, right? It's like a 5 or 10% chance to just instantly cook a second food and send it to your bank. Or Essentially, you just get free food out of it. You don't get like extra cooking XP or anything. But over the course of like 8,800 Desert Souls, it's going to be like 450 free Desert Souls that I can use later on for bossing, for Slayer, what have you. Um, yeah, very nice. So this cooking method that I was talking about is one that uh, Mike Rue and I imagine a few others have covered. But basically, you buy buckets of milk here, you go over to the dairy churn, and as long as you have those two farm totems placed with cows there, then you make cream cheese, you can AFK for more than two minutes, and you get something like 200 to 250,000 XP an hour, I believe. Um... And the interesting thing about this milk seller is apparently you can hop worlds and it will completely refresh their stock. So after you've made, you know, eight or nine inventories worth, you just hop to another world and you start the process again. Um, completely just very low cost, uh, you know, infinite amount of cooking XP that you could farm out of this. Um, the interesting thing here is that you can basically boost your cooking level because the, the, only real requirement for this is like 30 something cooking to do the quest to begin with. Uh, and then having the 70 something farming you need for both cows. If you have those out of the way, then you never have to cook trout, salmon, any of these low tier fish that you use simply to get your cooking level up. You can skip those steps entirely. I wish I had known this before going all the way to 73 with trout and salmon. Um, and this is what I'm going to do to get to like 80, 85 ish, really just to try and get my burn rates down. So when I start you know, really cooking food for uh, various other uh, activities, uh, you know, I don't burn as much, not as wasteful. The one note here is I don't believe uh, cooking urns work with this method, uh, which is perfectly fine. I mean, it's still free XP, and ultimately it's a good XP rate without having to make urns, which is nice.
And just as a, another tip for this method, uh, that the hardest part is honestly getting rid of all of the cream cheese that you make after you've made it. Uh, so once an inventory is full, you should keybind, or I, I guess um, set a, a spot on a toolbar um, for cream cheese here. And, and the main option is eat, but if you right click and it's at the bottom of your screen, you can automatically be hovering over drop. It's just how the game works, uh, you know, it pushes the, the options as far down as it can. Uh, so you can just spam, you know, right and left click and empty your inventory. Do know that you want to do this after an inventory is uh, full of cream cheese. Otherwise, you will start keeping the buckets. Well, I've given it a little more thought. And yeah, I'm going to buy these unstable air runes now. 250k isn't so bad. So we can pop that for rune span points. And then uh, now I can buy two pieces of the Master Runecrafter outfit, I believe. Uh, I think they're 4,000 points a piece. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we can get two pieces of this set. Um, just given that, you know, you're not going to do too much rune span um, to train rune crafting, I thought it would be a good idea to just purchase the points since you are going to want the outfit uh, at the end of the day. Uh, and then another thing is, you know, I'll need to get the full uh, Wicked outfit, but that can wait a little bit. And with that last cream cheese, there is my current farming or current cooking goal of 77. I don't know, 77 is kind of a weird spot, but uh, it's actually a requirement for the Sears Village Hard Diaries, which I can boost up to level 80 with a simple cooking potion and knock those diaries out pretty soon. I just need to get my fletching up a little bit further. As mentioned, I am working towards the hard Sears Village achievements, which also means that I need to get at least 78 fletchings so that I can boost for one of the other tasks. But that got me thinking about a certain reward or a certain thing you can purchase from the traveling merchant called Sacred Clay. It gives you access to rewards from stealing creation. Uh, it gives you reward points. And some of those rewards are the artisan's outfit, and Fletcher's outfit. The artisan's outfit, we'll, we'll save that for later. It means that you could potentially buy crafting XP. Super cool. Uh, but the Fletcher's outfit, right? Broads are really expensive, and that's my plan to go all the way to 99, is to just use broad arrows. How much will that save me over the course of going for 99? Well, as it turns out, the math comes out to spending about 4 million gold on the Fletcher's outfit, to save about 2 million gold worth of broad arrowheads. Now, there are some other considerations that you have to take into account there because, you know, that means like 6% fewer days of having to buy broad arrowheads. So if, if things really come down to the wire, that is a source of fletching XP that I can buy that's not limited to each day, essentially. Um, but it is a little more expensive, right? I have to spend about 2 million more gold over the course of getting 99 fletching. This is something that I think I'm going to do but I'm not sure. It's mostly about uh, if I plan to do post-99 skilling. I probably will at some point, so I probably should get the Fletcher's outfit. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not I feel comfortable with my money situation, you know, comfortable enough to purchase it. Uh, so we'll see if I do that. And I believe that walking across this log balance here will get me multiple pop-ups. Yeah, so that is actually completion of the easy, medium, and hard tasks in the Sears Village set. Uh, I guess it didn't give me all three pop-ups, but it didn't give me the pop-ups before, so I don't know. But time to go claim all those rewards. And hello, Sir K, let's claim the hard tasks. Yeah, this is just going to be going into Herblore. It's not a ton of XP, so it doesn't really matter if I put in anything else to begin with. Uh, yeah, that's nice. The most important part about having those hard tasks done, though, is that I now have access to the Enhanced Excalibur, which is awesome. It can be used as an offhand and, importantly, can be augmented. And an important part about it being augmented is that you can add things like this. So hopefully I will hit Mobile and Wise, please. Oh my goodness, perfect. Wise 2 and Mobile. That, I couldn't have asked for anything better, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but there we go. Wise to mobile, so I can now throw this in my offhand. And once I have bladed dive, I will be able to equip my enhanced Yaktui stick and dash around with it. Uh, because it counts as a melee weapon, so this will be the setup. Oh, and there are a few things I wanted to cover in case y'all 
don't know. Uh, mobile is very useful as it reduces the cooldown of the movement abilities, like Surge, Escape, Bladed Dive, and Barge, by 50%. So from 20 seconds to 10 seconds. This is really important. Uh, another thing about the Enhanced Excalibur is, well, the benefit over the normal Excalibur. If you activate the normal Excalibur, you get essentially a super defense applied to you as a temporary buff, right? It's a boost to your defense level. Activating an Enhanced Excalibur with the Hard Diaries done will heal you for 20% of your max HP over the course of, I think it's 10 seconds, and you can do that once per minute. That is huge. Say I'm going and doing Shattered Worlds again, which I will be in just a few minutes. Uh, that is essentially a shark every minute, just for free, by having this on me. Uh, it can just be sitting here in your inventory, and you right-click, activate, yell for Camelot, and you heal up. Uh, oh, and it's every five minutes, not every minute. My bad. Uh, but still, it's still super impactful regardless. And once you finish the Elite Diaries, it's actually 40% of your max HP, which is even crazier. So a lot of the time, you will find, uh, for instance, if you're doing Hunter, you'll have the Enhanced Yacht Wee Stick. If you're doing something like Woodcutting, you'll have a Augmented Hatchet here. If you're doing Mining, you'll have an Augmented Pickaxe here. And they're all going to have things like Honed or Furnace, what have you on them. Uh, but you're going to have this Enhanced Excalibur in your offhand, because why wouldn't you? And it'll have Wise on it, it'll have Mobile to help you get around, you know, Wise for your bonus XP. That's just the go-to skilling setup, uh, and I'm so glad to have gotten started on that. And there we have it. A lot faster than I expected to actually earn it, but I'm getting a little bit better at doing Shattered Worlds. There's a Bladed Dive unlocked. Time to start BGH. And this honestly couldn't have worked out any better, but there is Tier 2 Hunter Lodge acquired. Tier 3 is pretty good, and it's what I'm going to be going for next, but uh, Tier 2 is super important. Uh, tier 1 is really nice. This tier 2, though, it just makes it livable, right? If you get into a 3-dino encounter, which I know is pretty rare, but if you end up getting into one, you kind of need this. And there is our first Arcane Apoterosaur taken down. This is very, very cool stuff. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha! I knew... I would be lucky. You you don't even gotta you don't even gotta worry about it, man. Big game hunter. How many encounters is it? Here we go. I have successfully tracked and defeated seven big game dinosaurs for our first one, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Starting off day 44 with a quest completion swept away. Took all of five minutes for two whole quest points. I'm going to save the goulash that you can take from the cauldron here, though, until I get probably my last skill to 98, or, or just a really slow skill to 98. Another quest complete. The needle skips. Got the small and the medium XP lamp for, uh, well, typing all the words into the shard. Uh, and I think I might be able to get a large XP lamp as well. Let me see. It looks like the large XP lap might just be a reward for uh, doing replays of the needle skips. But anyway, have a large and a medium, or sorry, a small and a medium XP lamp that I'm going to put into, I think, prayer. Prayer just sounds right. The only thing I really took away from that quest, Desperate Times, is that Keros is actually, or Reldo is actually Keros the whole time, but... Uh, clue Carrier acquired, huge XP lamp acquired, and 350 quest points. Finally time to go talk to May again. Oh, and we're gonna dump this XP lamp onto the one, the only, Herblor. Yeah. And there are both dice rolls complete for 5 mil and 2 fortunate components. Yeah, very nice. I've been slowly working towards uh, powering up all of these shadow anchors, which I didn't know about before. Uh, but there we have level 60 archaeology, so I can finally go augment my dragon matic and start using it. Here we have our augmented matic, and there are two specific things that we're going for. One of those is just five sharps, and I'm trying not to get furnace. So let's see. Yeah, I... come on. <laughs> okay, we gotta keep trying. 
Can I at least be lucky on this one and get a decent roll on him sold? Two? Okay, one more. One more go. One more go. Okay, look, I'm just going to have to stick with him sold too then. You know, something must be off about that calculator because five sharp components was supposed to be like honed only on its own without furnace most of the time and I haven't seen a single <laughs> a single honed at all. Okay, well, uh turns out this is actually pretty rare for my level, but uh you know, like six gizmos later, hone four alone, that is perfect. I'm definitely just going to leave this on my Matic uh until I can get, you know, ancient invention unlocked. Because, yeah, this, this belongs to archaeology more than it does to uh, woodcutting or fishing. So this is what we're working with. Honed for, and I'm just sticking to Imp Sold 2 for the time being. There we go. Beautiful augmented Matic. And by cleaning this or restoring this shield, uh, that actually puts my archaeology above my summoning. The, this long grind that I've been working on finally accomplished. <laughs> Time to go do my weeklies 50 minutes before reset. And there we have the Tears of Guthix we've been working so hard on for a beautiful 70,000 XP drop. And I thought that before our weekly Herbie Werby we should boost up that XP gain a little bit and go ahead and claim it this lamp for 77 Herblore. All right we have a back-to-back -back Beastmaster so time to loot the first one. Ah, uh, well, you know, it's progress, right? It's more techie. All right, second loot. Let's hope for something good, baby. Let's go. Ah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, how many, how many kill counts is it, huh? Huh? Beastmaster, Durzag, 12 kills. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's get it. Let's get the important ability, Corruption Shot, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And in terms of techie, we're at 11.8k, so we'll begin Onslaught next, Storm Shatter after that, and then I guess reroll tokens or, or something? I, I'm not actually sure. I guess now we probably start buying like the, uh, the Acto stuff, right? Another quest done. Desperate Measures for a nice chunk of Archaeology XP. And a combat XP lamp, which I'm just going to throw into prayer. Oh, I totally forgot about the rewards for, I want to say, missing presumed death. But I just got 50k thieving, 50k HP, and 30k herblore. It's 30k in any skill above 75, so yeah, herblore. And there's Azanadra's quest complete for nice chunk of archaeology. And Div XP, the most important bit about that archaeology, though, is that it gets it higher than my summoning yet again. So I can go run my Tears of Guthix for the week, pop it straight into summoning, that'll get me over 65, and all kinds of things. They, it just water falls through. Uh, this XP lamp can go into anything. It's just straight up 10k XP. And I'm just going to throw it in prayer. Uh, you know, there are a lot of various quest rewards. I can go into, like, prayer or herblore right now. Um, prayer being the lower one means that I'm just going to throw it in prayer, um, but they're essentially interchangeable for the moment. Also, as a reward for that quest, I'm allowed to make the Pontifex Observation Ring. Um, it's somewhat useful for archaeology, which is nice. Uh, it seems like it may be useful for mining as well. Uh, the fact that it's got some prayer bonus on a ring is also pretty useful, um, but that being said, that is the last Archaeology XP I think I'm going to end up getting for myself uh, for the next week or so. Uh, I don't plan on training the skill any further than 63 for the time being, uh, other than through, uh, you know, the, the so-called player-owned nerds here. <laughs> um, I do have quite a few Chronotes banked up, about 28,500, uh, that I'm going to be using, uh, because there, there are different things that are required... Uh, you know, a certain amount of time that you have to send out your researchers uh, for, for different achievements. So I'll be working through those uh, and, and racking up a little bit of ARC XP along the way. On to day 45, and this is the big Tears of Guthix run I've been waiting for. 235 tiers for 70.5k XP. Yeah, straight to 65 summoning, which is what I need to claim my lamps from the World Wakes. 
And here we claim the static lamps and put these straight into, I don't think they can go into Herbler, so I'm going to, yeah, these are the weird ones where it shows everything that's, it shows all your skills that are above 65, but it can only go into combat. So two into summoning for sure to get level 67. And the last one is going to go in prayer. Oh, increase combat skills. Okay, never mind. Not prayer. <laughs> that's really strange. Prayer is definitely a combat skill. Well, I'll take the level 68 though. The first daily challenge I received a few days ago was a summoning daily, so I didn't claim it, right, because I was trying to get my archaeology up. That means I have five daily challenges to hand in all at once, which will be pretty fun. Yeah, 130,000 XP. That's, that's pretty nice. Grandmaster quest complete. Fate of the gods. 125k magic, 100k div, 100k slayer, 75k agility, and 50k summoning as well as all of these other various things. Uh, Shard of Zeros, very nice for when I go back to God Wars Dungeon eventually. Um, hey, I mean, 69 summoning, that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, div level for Radiant Wisps, that's pretty cool too. Uh, and I think there are some lamps that I can claim here as well. Yeah, so speaking to Azanadra here after this quest means that uh, you can claim a survivor's lamp for combat skills. Uh, this is some lore stuff. I just want to go ahead and go through the whole chat box. And there we go. Use this on combat skills. So it's only for 80 plus things. And it looks like it's only in, you know, magic attack strength, uh, HP and defense. So it's all going into strength here. That's just the, the obvious choice uh, right now, especially given that I'm, I'm trying to get to 85. And there are a number of other things that I can claim as well, uh, including like 200,000 div XP. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, but you can get bonus div XP if you complete the engrammeter. You can get another large lamp uh, after Ritual of the Majorat, which I'll claim later. Um, yeah. Yeah. A bunch of good stuff from this quest. It's got relatively low requirements, though the fights were a little hard. I should say relatively low requirements for this point in, in the count progression. Another quest done. One piercing note. I know going from grandmaster to like novice level quests, but there's a reason. And this is why claiming 50 K prayer XP by grabbing the Holy Sithara. Uh, this is, I actually have no idea how to pronounce that word. Sith Sithara? Sithara? It's an instrument of some kind. You claim it underneath the abbey by having lots of Ceridomen stuff on with a ring of visibility and a ghost speak amulet. And by playing it somewhere in the abbey, it gives you an achievement, uh, which I believe is for the desert hard tasks. Uh, something like that. And there is a very big Slayer level. Uh, I came to finally finish up this Water Fiends task that I've had for over a week now. Uh, yeah, level 77. So now I have both Strike Worm tasks unlocked, and it's time to start working uh, working towards getting those pieces. And there we have 485 Slayer points. Uh, unfortunately, can't quite unlock the... Oh wait, 300 points? Yeah, I can unlock Rings of Slaying. There we go. Uh, so that's done. Time to just keep boosting. You know, go to Simona, try to get some prefers down. Um, I know that I'm... Like, hey, there's lots of big quests I want to work on today. That's that's what's all in my brain. Uh, but I'm waiting for familiarization to roll back around and for me to actually catch it <laughs> before I continue training summoning and continue questing. Done some very quick Slayer task. Point boosting. Let's get task number 160. Let's see. Okay, Dagonauts or Calphite. We take Dagonauts and we skip it. Yes, cancel. I can cancel two more. Last one, Desert Strike Worm, baby. Let's go. We hit them every time. And didn't even have to use a VIP ticket. Prefer task. Like, I'm probably not going to get it on the first try. And if I get it on the first try, then I just wasted 100 Slayer points. But that's okay. You know, who needs to thank? We're, we're here just to, to get the drop, right? And this will be our third piece of the Shaman's outfit, the leggings.
Well, we did not get it on our first task, but that's perfectly fine. That that would be just unacceptable amounts of luck, right? On to task number 170. Let's see it. Aberrant Specters or Dusk Devil. You know what? I will kill some Aberrant Specters. Let's see what Simona has in store. Task number 180. Garbage. Okay, we're going to cancel that one and let's see... Anything better? Mmm, Turot, Spiritual Warriors. Kind of want to cancel this one, too. Yeah, let's let's just go for it. Cancel. Come on, just give me something decent, okay? Basilisks or Terror Dogs? What kind of nonsense? All right, look, I'll kill the Basilisks just for the Slayer Points. Okay, now, Simona, this is just cruel, darling. Desert Strike Worms by default, or Slayer Token to get Jungle Strike Worms. I think I'm going to take Jungle here so that I can put them both on Prefer. It's kind of odd. I know it costs a Slayer Token here. Um, it's also a nice change of scenery. I hate doing Desert Strike Worms or his Jungles are, are right beside a bank. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm just going to do it so that I can Prefer them. Uh, that way, both of these are taken care of and I can freely spend my points on things like Cancels. Okay, look, I just, I know, okay, I know, but let's, let's just, let's see the kill count. Jungle, Strike Worm, yeah, all right. On to task number 200, and it was as prophesized, I was wasting Slayer points instantly preferring these, uh, rip, but I don't need Jungle Strike Worms anymore, goodbye. And it's finally that time we're going to be training summoning and we're going to be showing off something very interesting uh, that some of you may not know. There is something called a spirit kayak pouch. You just go and get a kayak fur, mix it with a blue charm and some shards, and here you go. This spirit kayak, uh, let me check, interact, teleport. Here we go. So you have to interact with it and hit teleport. And it will teleport you here. And it's like, okay, why do you care about being near the Piscator's fishing colony? Well, this trap door here will take you down to a summoning obelisk, if I remember correctly. Yes. So, yeah, this is how you can do summoning. Before you have Prif unlocked, this is the fastest way to make pouches. And it can be up to like 5,000 an hour if you really get your clicks right. Uh, more realistically, it's probably like two or 3,000 an hour. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to be doing this straight to 74. And now I've got a good rhythm down. So I come here, use my preset, hit two, and it will automatically interact. Hit two again to teleport. And then I just, I could always blade a dive up. I'm generally, <laughs> I'm not that sweaty. Uh, and then, yeah, you just make your pouches. Boom. And then you hit one to teleport back to War's Retreat. Pretty straightforward. And the way that I get it to uh, interact with my follower on hitting two, having it, uh, you know, bound to my hotbar, um, I hit select follower interaction and choose interact. Uh, normally I have this on take BOB. That's just, that tends to be the most useful. Uh, but interact here in this case will get you to this menu. Okay, that's kind of incredible, but I ran into a penguin agent while <laughs> doing these runs. Got an elite casket from it. Uh, time to just pop this open for a die, right? Yeah, let's let's see what this has. And you know what? I actually have quite a few uh, other clues saved up uh, in the Karos clue carrier. So let's see what uh, what all I got. Let's pop all these open. Uh, let's see, three easies. Okay. Bunch of trash. Okay. Those are incredibly valuable. <laughs> Was not expecting that. Uh, magic combo. Okay, there's a fortunate component. This is a hard. No, I think it's a medium. Uh, okay, nice. You combo another page. Uh, let's see within the elite. All right, bunch of trash. That's pretty uh, par for the course with elites, though. And there is the big level seventy four. Going to do just one more run. I I have more blue charms and I have more uh, you know more money, more mithril bars. I could do more. Uh, but I'm going to stop for now because I have just enough quest XP left over to inch out 75 that I need for Plague's End. So, 
going to stop here for now. But look, that took all of what, like 15, maybe 20 minutes. And I made like, mm, I want to say just shy of 800 pouches. Okay. 724 pouches. It's quite a few. Uh, took no time at all. And there is another bit of a milestone, level 78 Slayer, and you're like, 78? Oh yeah, that's um, <clears throat> that's a requirement for Lord of Vampirium, the last quest before River of Blood. And there's 200 tasks in a row, which is just, it's frankly kind of insane. Another quest done, the Firemaker's Curse. The uh, firemaking and HP, XP don't really matter, but 30k agility for that relatively short quest is pretty nice though i did set things up perfectly so that 76 fire making would be got through that quest and that's a requirement for river of blood and we just had to come back to the wilderness agility course to pick up 77 now i mean it's not all that important i could uh, work around it but i thought i would go ahead and knock out uh, ritual of the majorat which needs 77 it's my last requirement also, can someone help tell me how I did 120,000 agility, only got called to the pit once, and then didn't even get a dang uh, nimble outfit piece whenever I was there? I just, I feel like I'm being really unlucky with this outfit. I've probably done the pit a dozen times and gotten two pieces. And completing this bed will pick up 79 construction, which happens to be our last requirement for the Lord of Vampirium, the precursor quest or prequel, I guess, to River of Blood. Did some more math regarding the uh, Sacred Clay, and it is definitely worth picking up. If not for fletching, then for crafting for the artisan's outfit. Um, as long as you can make more than like 450,000 GP an hour, which is not hard. As long as you can make more than that, you just pick this up as soon as you can and get the uh, the crafter's outfit sorted out. 52 is such a bad roll. <laughs> Something else worth considering uh, with regards to the Fletcher's outfit and whether or not you should buy the sacred clay from the traveling merchant is that uh, by going for that outfit, you know, just for going for 99 Fletching, uh, it's going to save you from having to make something like 40 to 45,000 headless arrows. Um, so it's saving you on feather costs to begin with, which is like an extra 250k. Uh, and then the amount of time it actually takes to make those is quite significant. So, you know, all things considered, it's probably worth going for, and I know that I'll be going for it. Uh, so going for both outfits on average should cost you about 8.4 mil. Uh, so that's something I gotta find money for. And there's 72 rune crafting, which is kind of a, you know, strange level, you'd think. It's not really a milestone, but it's kind of important, and I'll show you why tomorrow. Huge quest complete to start off day 46, Ritual of the Majorat. So, here we go. Oh, we already got the uh, the giant agility XP drop, but we got these three odd lamps, which are 80k XP in any skill 72 or higher. Now, originally, I planned to put these into Herblor, but where I'm at right now... I'm perfectly okay just using penguin points to get me over that, you know, 79 to 80 hump that I'm going to have to uh, to get through. Uh, so, skills over 72. I mean, I need to get rune crafting up to 77, so why not start here? Yeah, we're going to throw all of these into RC just to bump this baby up a little bit. And there we go. 74 rune crafting acquired. One of a kind quest complete for the great Dragon Rider amulet, which is a nice upgrade to, well, <laughs> everything else I have. A uh, chunk of divination, dungeoneering, summoning, which, bam, should get me 75, and a little chunk of magic to top it off. And here is another 25,000 bonus XP, which I can put into any skill. Um, I think I'm just going to go with Herblore for now. Actually, no, no, let's go with runecrafting. Uh, yeah, putting more bonus XP and flat rewards into runecrafting is good because I can always claim my penguin D&D lamps and you want to put those into the higher skills like Herblore rather than the lower skills like RC. The Lord of Vampirium complete. 
nice chunk of construction slayer and hunter and another of these beautiful tomes which is just going straight into herblore these vampires teach so much about herblore it is incredible now i'm 6.5k away from 79 where i can go claim a few lamps well, I have only spied a few of my penguins for this week, but that doesn't stop me from still having 65 points banked up right now. So let's just start by buying like three of these. I don't actually know how many I need, uh, but let's go ahead and use all of these on Herb Lore. Okay, 91k. Uh, so it should be three more and then like a small one. So one, two, three... And then a small should sort it out. Then use all and herblore. There we go, boys. Level 80. All of the levels I need for River of Blood. The next big herblore goal after 80 is 85. Uh, because that is the level you need to actually claim rewards from Sliske's endgame. Uh, however... There are a number of other things that I may want to put uh, XP into aside from Herblore, given that I will be able to grind it out somewhat effectively after fi finishing River of Blood, right? Having the upgraded Sun Spear lets you grind Vires to grind Herblore up, but uh, yeah, not, not decided on what I'm going to do with all that other XP just yet. Uh, we'll see when I get there. And there we have it, the beautiful reclaimed sun spear tier 78 weapon upgrade can augment it after the quest oh baby there we have it river of blood complete vampire quest line taken care of 371 quest points 75k herb or 50k fire making fletching mining and this beautiful book for 75,000 experience three times I have no idea what I'm going to use this on yet. I'm very split currently between herb lore and whether or not I should save this because, hey, if I save this, I get runecrafting up to 75. That pretty much takes me straight to 77. So I'm going to give it a little think. Yeah, okay. I, I'm kind of leaning towards just putting this into runecrafting after daily reset. Go pop my rune sphere, get my runecrafting straight to 77. So that requirement would be out of the way. And then I just have to grind my herb lore the normal way. I think that's I think that's how I'm gonna tackle this. Well, I needed something AFK to do for a little bit, so came, hit up the good old dairy churn, picked up 79 cooking, aiming for 85 from here. Uh, but a nice thing about this is 2,200 total. There we go, 2,200 total levels acquired in just 46 short days. All right, we went and did our daily rune sphere, and that's right. It's time to just pop it all in, and we're going to end up just shy of level 77. Yeah, just about 14k away. Um, so I guess we'll do one more rune sphere or something. I'm not sure. It's not that hard to get 14k XP. Uh, but anyway, that'll be 77 unlocked. Can do rune crafting through the abyss, uh, blood rune crafting, and it'll go crazy fast with the archaeology relics first batch of slayer rings made and it is just lovely seeing those components rolled in getting my first precious components will allow me to put uh yeah good old scavenging on the sun spear that's i mean it's the first thing you go for right um and of course i'm planning to augment the sun spear as soon as possible all right, all we're going with for now is Precise 2, Scavenging 2, and once Scavenging starts rolling some things in, once I level up a little bit, maybe once I just get to Ancient Invention, I'll be upgrading these for sure. I thought it was finally a good time to take care of this mini quest, so let's pick up Tarn's Diary uh, and enchant our Salve Amulets. The way that I got here was through the Ring of Slaying method, I'm sure most people know, but you can just unlock the Ring of Slaying, put them together, right-click, Teleport to Tarn's Lair, it takes you right outside. It saves you like 10 minutes, gives you 5k slay XP either way. Oh, apparently the trick is to use the Salve Amulet with the Diary. Uh, yeah, different from old school for sure. I'm uh, pretty sure old school just has a one-click button to change your whole inventory, but hey, it works. 
and ending off the day with just a bit of Slayer Point boosting. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get the Desert Strike Room task that I was looking for. So we just got to keep, uh, you know, marching on. But anyway, I, ch I took a look at how many clips I have saved up over the past few days, like since the last video went out, and it is absurd. So this is the end of the video. I know we're on a bit of a cliffhanger, but that's just how it's got to be for now. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in Prif.